All right, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Lone Star Hammered. I once again have Nick Toomey with me. It is um, So hey, let's let's just start into this one for this last week of, of, of players. Hey, real quick guys, if you know anyone that won an event, or if you're watching this and you have won an event, reach out to me. Or if I reach out to you, I've been emailing people off BCP. I'm not trying to scam you. <laughs> I, am, I, mean, I am not a spy trying to steal your identity. I'm just trying to get people on this show so we can recognize some of those players that are winning all across Texas, even if it's just for an RTT. So please, guys, reach out to me and just let me know if you would like to be on the show as well, even if you haven't won an RTT, because we are missing a guest this week. And that's okay, though, because we're going to still have a good time. Or if you just want to talk. Lou or if you just always, want to talk. You know, always looking for somebody to shoot the shit over small, squat-like yeah. humanoids. No, 100%. Especially Votan right now until I meta jump again. <laughs> Coming but, right up. Yeah, right? Um, all right, so we got some housekeeping stuff to do. Once again, I'm going to give a huge shout-out to the guys from uh, Wardome Houston. Uh, they're going to be putting on a fantastic event coming up here in a couple weeks. Please go buy your ticket. And if you do, use the promo code HAMMERED so that I can choose whatever school that they donate some Warhammer stuff to. And Clutch is also going to be donating some terrain. As well as uh, Alamo will also be donating terrain to that school. And if I win, we will vote on it as a collective uh, and choose the best high school to donate that stuff to. So... Hit them up. Wardome Houston's going to be fantastic. It's their first year. Their terrain looks great. They're using a GW style with some beautiful looking terrain. Uh, their venue actually looks really fucking cool. There's like a lake there. Yeah, it's um, like an esports venue. It's actually or something. Oh, is it really? I think it is. No shit. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool looking. Yeah. It looks super cool. Um, they their player packets out. They're actually using some really cool missions. They're using secondaries on those missions as well. Uh, it's going to be an, an absolutely fantastic event, and it's going to be a golden ticket event. So get your tickets for that, guys. Um, another thing, we are drinking tonight. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. So tonight, um, and I left the bottle downstairs, and I have crippled my legs this week, so I'm not going to walk down there. Uh, <laughs> but we are drinking a uh, Rebecca Creek limited edition. This is bottle 101. Uh, and it's a and it's a 111.8 proof. It's actually super fucking tasty. It's delightful. But we yeah. made some old fashions out of it, so that's pretty good. So cheers to that. Um, on top of that, we have our winner from last week of Woo. the Demon Prince. So of our box right here, and that winner uh, <laughs> is going to be Brandon Lucio. Ooh. Brandon, congratulations! You finally won nice. something, man. Um, and just Finally, for everybody, some chaos. yeah, just so everybody knows, I actually put it into a little uh, random generator, all, all the names that uh, commented, and that's how I do my choices. So our next event, or our next giveaway, is going to be when I hit 150 subscribers, so that's only about 25 more to go, Almost there. and we will be giving away something else that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll show you guys that once we hit 150, because it might be something a little bit bigger than what I have over there. Um, so good job, Brandon, on that one. All right, let's rip into these lists for this week. So, let's do it. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven events that happened this last weekend. There were some small ones, and there were some ones that had about 20 players. We're going to start first with the 40K at Dragon's Lair. This event was held in Austin, Texas at the Dragon's Lair venue. Um, and shout out to the actual owner of that, which was uh, Kerry Kunkel. It looks like you ran a pretty decent event. Flyfus. Yeah. I like that. I do as well. Alrighty, so our placings for this. We have our first place, which is going to be Jeff Hoven. He was running a Thousand Suns list. Kind of and it actually list. looks pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. so uh, once again, great name. Like it. Uh, anybody that adds a name to their list, I really just enjoy it. It's a fun thing to do, man. <laughs> I always put mine as narrative lists just to fucking mess with people, but this one's just turny. Um, pretty straightforward to what we're doing. You got to keep guessing, man. Like, yeah. Because that's the first thing they're going to see when they pull your, your name up on yep. that tournament uh, pairing app. Honestly, what so. I might start doing for my list is like make it like something like tourney or narrative, mm -hmm. but spell it wrong. So I think I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> keep guessing, dude. That's what yeah. I'm saying. All right. So we've got the Cult of Magic. He's running Aramon. Uh, no disc on this one. He's walking around. 
Yep. An exalted sorcerer, though, on a disc with that uh, umbralific crystal. That's, That's one that, that uh, does... Uh, uppy Downy? Yep, Uppy Downy. Yep. The Infernal Master with that Arcane Vortex, so just extra damage output right there. Yeah, Casino Gun. Yep. Uh, Magnus the Red, a Thousand Sun Auto Sorcerer take. in Terminator sense. armor with that Lord of Forbidden Lore. What does that one do for that's you? The, uh, that's the extra... It lets you redo a, a Cabal Power. Oh, yeah, that's right. So it lets you kind of move bolt. out there, you know, Magnus fucking Doom Bolts something in the face mm -hmm. and either moves again or Doom Bolts again or something. Yep, I like it. <clears throat> All right, after that we have a big rubric squad. So this looks like a 10-man squad with flamers. Yep. Like that. We've got a four-man squad with bolters and a Soul Reaper cannon. Another four-man squad, same same loadout, that Dallas. bolters and the Soul Reaper cannon. And 20 goats. Yeah, 20 Zangors. <laughs> I love uh, it. So two squads of 10 Zangors. Really like it. That's actually a really it's a interesting unit to see them play. Um, they're a little bit more resilient than people think, and it's just a lot of OC that can go on objectives and be really fucking annoying to deal with sometimes. And then we have a big Scarab Occult Terminator squad, yeah, but... which is, I think that's where they put the crystal. It's either that or in the uh, Warflamer squad. Yeah, because that's, that's on the Terminator uh, Sorcerer, right? No. It was on the... Uh, oh, that's the Forbidden Lore. Yeah. The, uh, so, yeah, they didn't do that then. Yeah. They put it on the uh, the Disc okay. Sorcerer. So, yeah, it's going to be that big Flamer squad that Uppy Downies and just runs around the board, just fucking handing out shit tons of AP. What is it? Two Flamers? Uh, yeah. 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 So, that's really good. And then the last thing they have is a Thousand Suns Chaos Spawn. Mm -hmm. I like this list a lot. I love seeing, especially seeing the big man there, seeing Magnus in it. I, I like that yeah. addition uh, you're seeing a lot of big, aggressive units now dominating tournament or tournament. Sorry, um, especially with some of those like last big wins all across the nation. They're they're using like those hard to kill units, and Magnus is one of them, and he deals a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. As far as like, in on a scale of the centerpiece units for armies that are good magnus i think has got to be at the top of that list because oh, yeah. he is in every single t-sons list yep for a good reason i mean the, the guy is insane yeah so Super it's cool strong. to see him running with the 10 terminators because that's not usually what you see you usually nope. see like mutilith vortex beasts yeah some cultists or something instead of goats so i agree cool and and the terminators like the first time i played against him in, in 10th i was very surprised because in 9th edition that was that like hard to kill unit yeah. And when I played against him in 10th, I was like, holy shit, I can just pick this up to kind of now. So it was cool seeing them in this list because he obviously made him work super well because mm -hmm. you won this event. So good job, man. Yep. Um, your first opponent was going to be Ian D. He was playing an Astra Militarum list. Uh, looks like a pretty standard, um, just out of line of sight, Astra Militarum list. It's with a couple teams. Yeah, with a couple tanks running around. Um, honestly, that could have been a hard matchup. And then your next, <laughs> the next person you played was uh, Brandon Lucio, so uh, the uh, winner of our sounds like a scrub. of our Chaos uh, Demon Prince. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, look at that. Yeah. Um, playing wonderful, custodes, wonderful name. Holy shit, custodes. Yeah. So he was playing custodes. Uh, name the list custodes. But yeah, so T Suns into custodes actually can give them uh, the T Suns just because custodes do have a way to deal with mortal wounds. They have that feel no pain against them. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's it's like taking a four up save. I yep. mean, if you, if they yeah. throw two doom bolts at you, you're you're killing models, which yeah. is more than a lot of armies can say in the custodes yeah. right now. And and with custodes too, like that's an army that if you go up against them and they just can't fail a four up save, they're going to win the game. Yeah. Right. So good, if you can good. even get them to the four up save. Yep. The so good job on that one. That's a that's a yep. honestly that's a good matchup. And then the last one was world eaters. Um, world eaters. Honestly, I hope that the World Eaters player didn't go first. If they did, they have a little bit harder of a time into that, I feel like. Um, so, I, I don't know. It's interesting, because they can, they can get there, turn one. They can. But it's it's kind of iffy. But if you screen properly with those Zangors, what are they getting? Exactly. Right? So. And that's what those Zangors are there for, is to just yep. string out and make sure 8-bound don't get into Magnus, turn one. Yeah. And then just counter everything and that you walk across the board with. Them. Yeah. 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 So, hey... Good job, Jeff. That's a, Those are some solid wins, man. And that honestly seems like a pretty decent matchup of people that you played against. So yeah, strong, work, strong yeah. work there. All right. So our next undefeated at this 40K Dragon's Lair event is going to be David Hall again. So we're seeing his name a lot in Texas. He's going to be 
one of those big hitters this year. I think that it's going to be hard to dethrone this man. Uh, and he is running the exact same list as Clutch. Same yeah. list, all right? So if you guys have it works, it works. Yeah, if you guys didn't watch the Clutch episodes, please go watch them. He was also one of our guests on the other episode. We're mm-hmm. going to go through his list, though, super quick because we've, we've given this list a lot of time and effort um, and broke it down a lot with the player himself. So the first thing he had was Bellacor. Uh, it gives out those uh, defensive bubbles, and it allows him to stay inside of his offensive and, like, buffing auras most of the game. A great unclean one with the Endless Gift gives him that four-up feel-no-pain, which is fucking insane on a great unclean one. A Keeper of Secrets with the Soul Stealer, just a fast fucking mover of death. Lord of Change is one of his gunboats with the Everstav. The Changeling, just to jump around, be super annoying, and possibly and stop units. Make Arco Flagellants not be able to fight. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it seems like a something that happened on stream, you know? <laughs> Moving on. Hey, it happens. Uh, <laughs> two squads of Nurglings, obviously, to do objectives. Pink Horrors, once again, to spawn more uh, OC bodies and just sit on an objective and be really annoying. If they pal around next to that Keeper, or sorry, that Lord of Change, they become better at what they do. And Plague Bearers following along. To just max OC stuff, followed by two soul grinders, which are absolute beasts to deal with. They do really well in shooting, and they have some pretty decent uh, melee as well. They're they're honestly fantastic models. So good job once again. Uh, the good people work. that David played against that he just beat up on. I'm going to make fun of David a little bit. Just rolling through. Hey, he played another David. So David Hall versus David Villarreal. Uh, David Villarreal was running his Admec Chicken Walker list. Chicken, and chicken. honestly, I think this is a little hard matchup for that chicken walker list because some of the things that it does really well, David Hall's list turns off. Yep. Um, after that, we played John Borden. John Borden's going to be having a Cult of Magic, so another T-Sun, so a little bit of a T-Sun's heavy event. Uh, completely different list than the other guy. Um, 20 Terminators. Yeah, so a bunch of Chaos spawns, some Mutalists. Two mutalists. So, Is there it, a Magnus in that list? Uh, no, no Magnus. Crazy. Yep. So, not surprised uh, David Hall won that one. He's a very good pilot of this list that he has, and it's very hard to deal with, even with the amount of mortal wounds that T-Suns can put out. And then his last one was Maxwell Eberlein, uh playing the Full, Metter, Met, full Metal Thresher Convocation, Convocation 9RX. 9RX 710. I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, we don't understand, dude. Yep, another ad mech list. Honest. With looks like a bunch robots. of robots. Fuck yeah, I like eight hundred points of robots. Yeah, I love dude, it. that's what's up. That's Absolutely. why it was that. That's why it has that name. It's that full metal, full metal thresher. Cool. Um, Get threshed. Yeah, but the robots right now I think are a little bit overcosted. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. Yeah, I wish I actually like love that unit. I think it fits the forty k aesthetic. Everything about it is fucking yeah. it's phenomenal. Just, yeah. It looks cool. Its lore is cool. Um, they just don't have the staying power that they used to, and their damage output isn't there either. Yeah, so no. it's kind of easy for David to pick apart that list because when you have those just two giant units and he has six big scary fucking monsters, yeah, they just the uh, demons just need that shit. So hey, good job, David. Yep, um, absolutely crushed it there. You got anything else to say on that one? No, I mean I'm not surprised at all. David yeah. is an amazing player, so yep. uh, no, he's that's been doing, a good list. It's a really he's been good doing list, really well so. recently, David. You just need to score better, dude. Yeah, give more 84, points, 82, 74. Man, Those are rookie numbers. Rookie numbers, bro. Bring that shit up. All right. Good job, guys. Our next event is going to be the Brigandry Monthly. This was over in Greenville, Texas. Uh, this looks like a 10-man event. And let's check out our placings. So the first one, um, and our, our first and actually only uh, undefeated on this one because it was an eight-person event, it was Benjamin Wood uh, with the team who is this elisi guy um i tried to reach benjamin wood if you uh if we've met before i feel like we have reach out to me uh if you win anything else so we can have you on the podcast because i also tried to talk to christian elisi because of your team name and he didn't respond is that just is it just christian i don't think so oh, okay. if it is it's it's hilarious uh so the list we have is going to be called zoom zoom it is a necrons hypercrypt yep we start uh kind of with those token uh necron units that we see all the time we have the satan nightbringer and we have the satan shard of the void dragon they do what satans do they're hard to kill and they kill shit followed by a hexmark destroyer with the dimensional overseer 
Another Hexmark Destroyer just hanging out by himself. A uh, Locust Lord. Another Locust Lord. A third Locust Lord. He's got two enhancements. He has the Arisen Tyrant and the Aste- Ast- Osteoclave. Osteoclave. Yep. Yeah. Osteoclave Fulcrum. Uh, what does that one do? Ah. Uh. I was that was the one I didn't hope you didn't ask me about because I know the other two. Yeah, I will find um, out. I should for, know this because I'm playing this army. Right I know, now. right? Um, after that, we've got a large uh, scarab squ- swarm of six uh, actual bases. Then we have a two small three man scarab oh, swarms. It's the deep strike gives the unit deep strike. The, it gives the unit deep strike. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, he has a unit of flayed ones, a unit of locust destroyers. Obviously, big unit. Yep, big unit, two big units actually. Yep. Uh, locust destroyers; those are the ones he's probably going to be deep striking. Um, a locust heavy destroyer unit, a big man as well with the and uh, and medic so exterminator. That's the, lots that's of shots, a shit ton of shots. Yep. And then two of the locust destroyer, heavy destroyers with three of the gauze destructors. So those are the yep. single super high damage shots. Holy fuck! I love this list. That is a shit ton of destroyers. That's a lot. And, I, you know, I kind of wonder if he puts the Arisen Tyrant guy with the lots of shots, guys. Yeah. I, I wouldn't blame him for that because you can just deep strike and fuck up anybody's backfield. Well, not the deep strike, the uh, the rerolls. Oh, so yeah, in, yeah, the Arisen Tyrant. Sorry. You sorry. shoot like 36 times, yes. exploding on fives, rerolling everything. Yep. And then I think you're rerolling wounds against infantry or something? No, 100%. Like that. That's where that goes. Yeah. 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 That's... But, I mean, he's got the big uh, regular Locust units, too. I don't think you put it there because I think they get the, just because they're so devastating in what they do. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to do it, I'd, I'd put it on the in medics. But yeah, I mean, cool this list. is this Lots is a of super destroyers. this is super cool hypercrypt legion list because you haven't I haven't seen one yet where it's just so many big destroyer blobs jumping all around the table. A lot of times with these yeah. hypercrypt or hypercrypt lists that we see, you just see so many more small units, and this one he has got a fuck ton of big units. Yeah, jumping them all over the table. That's that can be devastating to your opponent. Yeah, because you you pop them in. It's like, oh hey, I have three heavy destroyers. Cool. If you don't kill this in a turn, you're not going to get it next turn. Yeah, because you're just and they're just on. so efficient at killing whatever they come in and see. Yep. The my only concern with this list is, and I'm sure this player uh, thought of this beforehand is, um, on tables with good terrain, good heavy terrain, this list can really get toned down. Yeah, um, but I imagine it's an RTT. You know, maybe playing some players uh, who want to play their big models. Yeah. Seems like it would do pretty good. Possibly. Let's see who we played against. So first opponent was going to be Andrew Boggs, Astro Militarum. Those are probably some big models in that one. Bunch of tank commanders. Uh, looks like some huge Death Corps of Creed blobs, a Bane Blade, bunch of fucking tanks. So yeah, that's definitely one of those lists that they were playing some big models and and that uh, and Minic. Unit is one of the oh units that will absolutely shred those uh, Death Corps units. Yep, hundred percent. That's a that's a good solid win for that one. Uh, Stephen Bickers was his next one. Stephen's a pretty pretty good player as well. Recently, right? Yep. yep. No, Stephen's very good. Uh, he and he was running big chonkers tyranids. It's funny that we just talked about how if his opponents just had wow. big ass units and that's what he played. It's almost against. like that's, this guy knew with the meta he was going into. That's phenomenal. You know, I love it. Right? Uh, and yeah, it is. It's just all. It's a hive tyrant, a swarm lord, uh, exocrine, some malaceptors, a malt lock, Norn emissary. Yep. No, it's just yeah. a bunch of big, big bugs for you to jump around and kill. Jeez, I keep closing out too many windows. Um, so solid win on that one as well, man. And if it, if this last one, if this is if this is big units as well, Did we're I calling call it, it Benjamin. You knew it? you knew your meta, Thomas Tompkins, Space Marines. Ah, oh, damn. Nope, just. Just two Iron space Storm, marines. Though? Hold on. Is it Iron tanks? Storm? And then let's scroll down. Scroll. Oh, it is. It's fucking tanks. No, it's not. Oh, Five yeah. Redemptors. Three Redemptors. Oh, no. Nope. Oh, Storm, Storm, Storm Ravens. Yep. Double Storm Ravens. Running that me. Redemptor list. Uh, very powerful list right now. That's a solid win because that is, that is one of those boogeyman lists out there right now is the Space Marine Iron Storm. Uh, you know, Ultramarine's kind of a kind of a cool take on it. Yeah. Usually, you see that as Blood Angels or Dark Angels, yeah, um, or even Black Templars. But uh, you know, if it works, it works. Yeah. A lot of times, I mean, uh, a lot of these Space Marine players, and I don't blame them. They're they're playing with what they love, though, too. Like, if this guy loves Ultramarines, that just might be he's like, fuck it. Yeah. 
You know, I mean, at a certain point, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about, like, which special character are you taking or whatever, so. I agree, I agree. Cool, man. Hey, well, Benjamin Wood, good job with your Necron list. Those are some solid wins, man, and congratulations for winning that Brigandry monthly uh, monthly 40K. All right, our next one is going to be... The Forge. This is the Forge March RTT. I think this was the biggest one from the weekend. Um, ran by Jared Gomez. Super good player running that event, so good job there. And this is going to be in Houston, Texas. Looks like we're going to have two undefeated. Our first one is going to be Oscar Ruiz with Death Guard. Fuck yeah! Nice, dude. It's my new army that I'm starting is Death Guard. I'm so excited to play this army. It's going to be fantastic. Um... All right, so his list. Let's see it. I want to see the breakdown. Yep. So our name for this one is 2024-304. So maybe just the date that he made the list. Looks like... BD. BD. What would BD be? Big Dick Death Guard. Big Dick Death Guard? Yeah, I don't know. Probably. That's what we're going with. It's got more Big Dick So it might be. And Typhus running the two named characters. Uh, so we have a bi- bi- Biologus, uh, the Putrefier. Giving you those um, grenades. Sorry, uh, yeah, the grenades. But also the one that I found playing this list recently is, it sustained is the or no. It's not sustained. It's uh, lethal hits. Lethal hits on right. fives, which with that big blob is actually super fucking helpful. Uh, Lord of Virulence to help out possibly any indirect that he has and attached to a Terminator unit. He has Mortarian. Uh, Mortarian, I fucking love right now. I just played a Votan guy the other day. Uh, Corey Russell, he was actually on our podcast um, this last episode, and I crushed him because I ran Mortarian up the fucking field, and he was like, "Man, Mortarian kind of fucks around if I don't if I don't <laughs> deal with him quick enough." Um, He's still Morty, man. He's not easy to take. Down. Yeah, and a lot of people just keep him in the back to buff up some of those other units, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna run everything forward." Uh, you know, I'm gonna send it. Yeah. And then we had Typhus as well, and we'll Typhus see. is eighty points. Yeah, he's pretty cheap for what he that. does. Yeah, That's super cheap, kind of crazy for a Terminator fucking character. He's oh really yeah. Cheap. yeah, yeah, he he'll kill. Yep. So we have a small Plague Marine squad. Looks like no, right? Yeah, no, it's a small one. Uh, so two small uh, yeah. five man Plague Marine squads, each kitted out with a melt a gun and two heavy Plague weapons and a spewer for melee and melta. Yeah, yep. I like it. Honestly, this is how I had my little small mans before I moved them mm-hmm. to the big 10 mans, and I just fucking went all melee as, as hard as I could. Uh, one Rhino, uh, that's to carry around those Plague Marines super well. I really like the Rhino edition. Uh, unit of Cultists, two units of Cultists, sorry. Yep. Um, and a Defiler, holy oh, fuck yes, shit. this is such a Chad move. Crap. Good job, dude. Hey, nice. that's Death Guard Defiler. Man, I, I fucking, I, I was looking at Defiler the other day, and I was like, I was wondering, I was like, how can I make this work? And I couldn't find a way. <laughs> Don't put it on a base. This guy, obviously, it yeah. <laughs> Does it even have a base? It doesn't have a base. It doesn't. No, it's, yeah. that's the Soul Grinder. But, you know, that is the, the meme of the, the chassis. The Soul Grinder is a base? How, how far into this do you want to get? Not, not not that far. Okay. But, yeah, hey, dude, I like the Defiler, man. It, it can obviously <laughs> have some good damage output. I personally looking at it was like, damn, 190 points is a lot for that. But good job for making yeah. that fucking work because that's a cool model. I love that model. Chad move. Um. Yeah. Looks like a small uh, yep. Death Guard or Death Shroud Terminator squad. Two of them. Uh, so just that three man, maybe jumping around, just causing some threats, doing objectives if you kind of need them to. Uh, two bloat drones. I love it. Uh, one has the blight launcher, and then the other one has plague spitters. So just kind of giving you different options. And when I was looking at my list uh, building this Death Guard, I realized that the bloat drones work significantly better than running spawns. So solid work on bringing those guys as mm. well. And then two Plague Burst Crawlers and a big 20-man Poxwalker to walk around a Typhus and make him a 26-wound character. Spitters on the Crawlers, too, which I think is yeah. the correct answer. I do, too, just because you're walking them up the field with Mortarian. Yeah. Like, you're, exactly. you're you're no longer just sitting in the backfield shooting them off because you need to walk them with Mortarian to get yep. those buffs and everything like that. Yeah. Getting, and then, that, getting that minus one toughness, they start really turning on Yep. with that minus one toughness. Yeah, and then the Nurglings, uh, just one squad. Obviously, they're just to do some action, some behind enemy lines or something like that, or using them to possibly make your opponent counter-deploy to where they're at with that infiltrate and like stopping them with screening 
with pregame moves and things like that. Yeah, and if you put them forward, you can kind of leave them behind a, a ruin in the middle mm -hmm. with some plague marines, and it's like, do you really want to charge these plague marines? You're going to be minus one to hit, potentially minus two. Yeah. With that, you know, depending on what the contagion they took. Uh, they can really be a headache for yeah. some units to deal with. So, have you? I've, I've really like I the con, the only contagion that I take is the uh, the uh, the uh, decreasing their armor save against certain matchups. Uh, the, the minus one weapon skill, ballistic skill is brutal. Like uh, oh, okay. against that, against yeah. demons, for for example, they don't have yeah. an armor save. Okay, like, that makes a lot of sense. Weapon skill, and it really cuts the uh, cuts the edge off those big demons and oh, the damage yeah. they're doing that's a cool list though oscar good job on that man yeah. i fucking i love that list great um all right let's see who we played against and i need to do this correctly cool our first one is going to be oscar played against jason shelton that sounds familiar that does sound familiar as well and ultramarines playing vanguard um cool. running just Cal pretty adventurous yeah yeah some centurions a pretty standard uh vanguard list i like it that can be a hard yeah. matchup though just because of the damage output on that it can delete some of those really heavy hitting units that Oscar could possibly run with yeah, those that's a Death Guard. With yeah. Death Guard. The next one we have, he played against Henry Davis, uh, playing Death Watch. Uh oh, Henry Davis, watch out! I love that you're playing Death Watch, uh, but Corey Russell might come find you. Um, Play a tournament. Yep. Win it all. Yeah, dude, go to go to go to a major. <laughs> go to Henry. one tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Best and potential. Corey's gonna, Corey's gonna come after us too now, <laughs> uh, but he's playing actually the uh, the Black Spirit Task Force too, which actually I love for Death Watch. Pretty cool, yeah. Um, but th that 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 list can be fucking insanely destructive. If you don't know what you're dealing with, yeah. that list will just run all over you. Yeah, it'll yeah. table you. Yeah. Like you'll just all of a sudden you'll you'll open up your eyes and be like, holy shit, I just I I just completely fucked up. Oscar obviously didn't, so good job there. Yep, great job. Next one we have Alex Meyer, also somebody that sounds pretty familiar. Playing Chaos, Chaos Knights. Knights. Holy fuck. Strong work on this one. I think that going into any sort of vehicle-heavy list is Death Guard's hardest matchup right now, especially not bringing the Predators. Mm -hmm. I really fucking... I pray that you ran the Death Defiler up with Mortarian and just meleeed some of these guys to death because oh, that would be Defiler so fucking versus cool. A, yeah. Versus like a carnivore? Yeah, oh my that'd be God, great. Dude. That'd be, oh that'd be fantastic. And watch like the Defiler come out on top just because he charged first or something. I bet he did. I yeah. bet he did. Um, and that's, cool. But I don't even think he has a... You know, it's just a giant war dog list. Yep. Uh, Pretty standard stuff. Yeah. Which still, it, that, that is, I mean, a, that is a very hard matchup for Death Guard. So solid fucking win on that one, bro. Great. That's great really... Job. That is strong work. So good job, Oscar. And I love your list, man. Strong work. Our next one is going to be uh, Robert Retu from yep. Forge Masters. That name also sounds familiar. Running Leagues of Otan. I actually played Robert. Hell yeah. Uh, not last clutch. Not this uh, recent cl clutch, but the one before that. Oh. He's the one. He's got a really cool like synthwave pirate looking. Oh, uh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Really no, cool. Robert has a super fucking cool looking army. Um so for those of you that haven't seen his army, his uh, it's a mostly converted, um, and he I I don't know if he designed it or printed it himself or like I don't know where he got these boats, but they're fucking He's phenomenal. Got a land fortress that's a pirate ship. Yeah, it's awesome. But it has all the GW guns on it. It looks yeah, no, fucking it's super amazing, cool. super fucking cool. Very well put together army. Um, so we're gonna start looking at his list though. So we have hey, he's running an Iron Master with Grim Demeanor. I like that build a little bit. It's pretty good. Running a call with an appraising glare. Able to put out judgment tokens. Getting that plus one to hit or also maybe plus one to hit and wound on units on objectives. Um, and looking like one, two, three. Hearthkin warrior squads. Pretty standard loadout there. Running that high last auto rifle and the rotary cannon with all the extra shit that they get for free now that they're 110 points. Shooty mode and all those. Yeah. Oh, the kin melee. On, yeah, on and the then drone. a bunch of close combat weapons. Yep. Yeah, no, I like that. It's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> so he's got one of his hearth uh, kin warrior squads is a little bit more melee focused with a uh, bunch of kin melee weapons, which is pretty cool to see. We have one, two, three Sabotars, all with high las beam cannons. My favorite fucking option. Good job there. That's phenomenal. It. Yeah, I just played old Nick here in a game right before we recorded this, and just killing stuff on Overwatch. Yeah, why not? Hell yeah, I hate it. Why not? You roll a six, <laughs> get D three extra shots. It's phenomenal every time. Yep. Uh, we've got one huge Thunderkin squad followed by another one. 
These are both going to be uh, Grav. And then a third, smaller, three-man Grav uh, Thunderkin squad. I really like seeing all the Thunderkin, man. I personally run a fuck ton of Thunderkin. They're super good. They're super good. Even with the points increases, I think they're still one of the best units that we have in our codex. Uh, they, they tie bikes for first. So the Pioneers are up there. Next one, we have a big uh, Hearthguard squad. I'm pretty positive. If you don't, then you should. He's palling that around with the call to give them those uh, lethal hits, which can be very, very effective. Um, and running that with the Volkite Disintegrators, I like it, man. It, it, that, that unit puts out so many shots, and they're very hard to deal with sometimes for certain certain units. Slow and then he's got his Hecaton Land Fortress that looks like a pirate ship. Running that SP Heavy Conversion Beamer, solid option there. And then two just three-man, uh, right, that is three-mans? Yep, yep, two three-man Pioneer squads. They're there to do objectives and to hop on stuff pretty early in the game. But they also, if you want to play them late game, can get you a lot of shit late game. And they are not a unit to disregard for their damage output. They are absolutely devastating oh, yeah. in shooting still. So Nick experienced that as well. You know, one Pioneer squad can smoke a Castigator. Why not? <laughs> cool. Had to throw, had to throw a grenade too. All right, hey man, that's I love that list. That's a solid list, man. Yep. As far as Votan's concerned, this is kind of where Votan's leaning, getting some of those warriors, um, and just put them in, in Sagittars and and rolling them up the the field and getting as much shooting up there as you can, with a lot of OC. So strong work there. Let's see who we played against, man. Uh, the people that we played against are going to be you, Seth Bradish. What's you up? know, Corey and I were talking about that. Uh... That third hearth uh, kin squad with the melee, mm -hmm. and I think it's what six two two, yeah. profile in the melee. It's actually not bad. You know, you run that into a marine squad or something, or something easy that ran to the middle. And oh no, you're thinking the six two two is the uh, um, berserker squad. Okay. The the melee weapon one. I don't think it's strength six. Okay. Yeah. That's the Berserker squad. But it's, talking it's about two damage, right? Like AP2? I think so. I think it might be AP2. I, don't, I think it's Never. one damage. Corey, it's all your fault. We'll take a look at it. Damn you, Corey. All right. Um, so you were playing up against a uh, Gladius Task Force with Dark Angels. That can be sometimes like hard to deal with, list. but you've got a lot of damage, too. Looks like they've got a lot of vehicles that were easy to kill. So that's just that's a fun matchup to play against. It allows you to use all the tools in your army very effectively uh, and really just... Solid win there. Yep. Next one was Zach Meyer playing Imperial Ooh. Knights. Man, you know, hate to see it sometimes. That's a lot of grab. Yep. Sometimes you old anti. anti sometimes you just too. get to watch the world burn. <laughs> um, and when you play up against Knights right now with Votan, that's uh, tough run, Zach. Yeah, tough run. Hopefully, you were able to have a couple beers. Um, next one is going to be World Eaters. Dude, if you if you screen that Votan army out correctly and maybe bring in some stuff on reserves, you can make the world leaders suffer. Even if they get turn one, turn two, doesn't matter. Um, with the nerfs that world leaders got, if you have a full shooting army like Votan that can also kind of take a hit back as well, it can be really really hard. Is there uh, any other? Is there what's his face in this list? I don't think so. Oh, no. he's got. He's got some brigands. He's got some. This beans. list is a little all over the place. Very, uh, very thematic list. Yep, Pretty I cool. like it, but that can be a very hard list, and just that straight shooting powerhouse that Votan bring. Yep. So hey, Robert, good job. That's that's a fun list to play, man. I really like seeing it. I love strong seeing work. Votan do good. So strong work, dude. All right, our next event is going to be the. It is a four-player, two thousand point soup and slash. Did you guys have soup as well? Seven. Yeah. Can I'm honestly I'm Placing. curious. Um, let's see where we're at first. Oh, they never finished it. <laughs> and we did this in San Angelo, Texas. Is this a league? I don't fucking know. Yeah. This yeah, this, the third round is is not uh, scored. Mm, man. Is it really? I don't think so. Yeah. Son of a bitch. All right, hey, that's a league. Sorry, guys. Hey, we'll have fun out there uh, with your <laughs> fun, super slash. Slash. All right, moving on to the next one. That's my bad. <laughs> it's all good, man. Our next one is going to be just the March 40K RTT. This one happened in Midland, Texas. Another Midland event. I like seeing them. Uh, ran by Taylor Gregory. So good job, Taylor. This looks like it was just a six-man event, but those are still some of the funnest ones to go to because sometimes you can bring whatever the fuck you want and have a, have a goddamn blast, fantastic dude. time. 
Just have like seven beers. Yep. Or just bring some shit that just fucks up all your friends. And just also yeah. have a pretty fucking fun time. <laughs> just uh, crush some dreams. Yeah. Sometimes even like I hate going to thousand points events because I usually am like, oh, a thousand points. Fuck it. People won't care. And then everybody else brings not some around these parts. Absolutely fucking bonkers <laughs> shit. And I just I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Um, but yeah, hey. So he, uh, our our number one from this one is Noah Hooper. Um, Noah, reach out to me if you ever want to be on our our little channel here, uh, because I'd love to have you, man. But yeah, you don't have a list for your Necrons. Uh, I'm just gonna throw something out of the limb. Say you had a couple satans, and either. Some hypercrypt or canopic court. Yeah. So cool. you know what's uh, I'm noticing that this there's six players here and <laughs> there's the Warhammered team and the Warhammers team. I wonder if there's like a hmm. like a crazy rivalry going on there. There's got to be two different teams because there's right. two players that are definitely no, they're definitely two different. The teams. Warhammered and then there's some that are the Warhammers. Um, yeah, it is kind of crazy. All right, Noah, let's see who we played against. Uh, round one, we played against Zachary Crabtree. So he was running orcs. Honestly, I love seeing orcs right now. I think they're really fucking strong. Uh, and he's running a super fun looking orc list with a bunch of trucks, trucks battle wagons, yeah. flash kits. This is this is a strong orc list. Dude. Solid work on this one. I honestly do think you were playing hypercrypt because I think if you're playing Canoptic Court, you're going to have a real rough time into that. Um, the next one is going to be. Ethan Albano. Do you think Canoptic Court is better into orcs? I don't think so. Really? No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think, Hypercrypt. Yeah, oh, yeah, I that's what I'm saying. Like, is it, it, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's, without seeing his list, I think it was Hypercrypt. Damn. I'm just a fan of Hypercrypt. You guys are just a bunch of dick punchers down here. The next person you played <laughs> against was fucking Custodes, man, and it's just like... With a, with a strong list name, too. Yeah. It's uh, the Ligma. Dude, you guys are just fucking each other up. <laughs> Damn, down 15 in, Wardens? Down in fucking, uh, where was this one it's at just, again? It's going down in Midland, dude. Yeah, in Midland. You guys are just fucking each other up. But yeah, just a fuck ton of Wardens, so strong work, Noah, as well. <laughs> just beating up on some of these meta-ass lists, dude. I fucking love it, dude. That that's like that just proves your ability to, to win as a, as a player. Strong work, man. Yep. And the next one was Astro Militarum, and it's a, a really strong-looking Astro Militarum list, too. Chimeras, he's doing... Oh, he's got some uh, Death Riders, right? No, I didn't see any Death Riders. Oh, one, one little. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one fucking unit. squad of Death Riders. Yeah, that's cool. Interesting. Yeah. Two Honestly, that's, that's a strong looking list too, man. Hey, good job, man. So you beat up on some Admech, some Custodes, and a uh, an Orc list, man. So strong work there over in Midland, Texas. You know, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to take a wild guess mm -hmm. and say it was... Double monolith with thirty immortals. You think so? Yeah, that's that's my guess. Because okay. that that's the list. I've yet to see double monolith. Double monolith is actually hilarious, hmm. hilariously good. Because you can like, you can pick the dudes up from one monolith and teleport them to another one. So you can hmm. kind of like play this crazy game on top of your already you know crazy, crazy hyperphase game. That'd be cool. It gets wild. There's some extreme jank. I'd love to see it. All right. Um, well, hey, good job, man. And strong work down there in Midland, just beating each other up. That's fucking sick. Fucking yeah, you guys, man. like, it looks like everybody ran just fucking dick punching this. <laughs> uh, all right. Our next one is going to be the Texas Toy Soldier March Tournament. This was in uh, Carrollton, Texas. Or Carlton, however you want to pronounce that. I'm pretty sure it's Carrollton, though. And our placings are going to be, we have, this was a bigger one, too, this week. Uh, 16 people. Strong work for getting everybody to... To show up to that one, we have our first place winner is going to be Nathaniel Bjorg um, from Big D Energy. Please Nathaniel, load up your list. All right. Uh, you were running Tyranids. Um, we've all seen it. This is another beautifully converted army. Uh, and he designed a, and uh, did a lot of this himself, but all of his Tyranids look like robots. Yeah, they're like mechanical. Yeah. And they've got this crazy, sick. like. They all have like piston legs and shit. Paint job yep. on them, too. Yeah. Dude, it's they're such like... a cool looking fucking army. Um, I wish we could talk a little bit about that list. I don't know what's in it, though. Uh, I think it's, I think it's like a swarm list. So, you know, lots yeah, of yeah. models. Yeah. I think, but yeah, I also think he has like the big monsters, too. So I don't know what the fuck he I don't mean. know. Maybe he changed it up for the RTT. Who knows? Could have. Let's say it's swarm. We'll play a game and we'll say it's swarm. Uh, some people that you played against are going to be uh, Cameron Hardin. Uh, which is Blood Angels. Very Blood, Blood Angels running uh, the Sons of Sanguinis, too. Mm -hmm. So running that actual Blood Angels detachment. 
Lots of characters. Just with a lot of characters, good melee threats, a couple gladiators thrown some in there. Just for some some, company. Just for some fun. Just going to run at you and try to hope it charges. Yeah. And if the swarm just didn't die, it didn't die. The swarm continued. It respawned because it had machine parts. The next one was going to be against Sam Johnson. Uh, playing Astro Militarum. That actually could be a really hard matchup because Astro Militarum can just fucking shit on that list with so much shooting and those hard to kill Bulgren Lots of squads. Bulgren here. Yep. Yep. And a Hellhammer too. That's that's Ooh. a good that's a solid win, man. Honestly. Oh, it's Hellhammer and a Storm. And fuck, a Storm fuck, yes. Wow. Yes. Dude, I love looking at some of these I hope RTT you can move events. out of your deployment zone. And just fucking like <laughs> just people that are just bringing so much fucking amazing <laughs> shit. It's it's phenomenal to watch. I love it. Um and then the last one is gonna be Nick Carpenter. Uh, and that one was Firestorm, Firestorm Assault Dark Force Angels. with Dark Angels. So just being able to move super fast and do a lot of shooting, whatever the else you want, with a fuck ton of grav cannons. Grav, eradicators. That's, that's some cool shooting, yeah. And the Redeemer. Two Land Raiders. Land Raider and a Redeemer. That's just, just another kind fucking... Kind of just an like, old school... Hey, fuck you, here's really my list. Stuff. Like, just plop it on the table and being like, bam, double Land Raider and just, all this just, fucking shooting, yeah. Dude, just everybody's just fucking going hard right now in Texas. Love I love it. Hell yeah. Well, solid wins, Nathaniel. That was, that's, those are some good ones, dude. Strong work. And then our next undefeated from this Texas Toy Soldier March tournament is going to be Lachlan Vaughn and playing Necrons with Hypercrypt. It's cool. Hypercrypt. Hey, it's called Test. It's pretty, just a, bitch. pretty, pretty simple test. Uh, Chronomancer with that Fulcrum again. Deceiver, you don't see that often, but I've seen it a little bit for yeah. that redeploy. So I was talking to uh, somebody the other day that did really well with it at mm -hmm. Clutch, and the redeploy is a thing, but it also has precision on its stuff. Interesting. So he That's was cool. able to use it to basically the only character in the game that he wasn't able to like just one round kill was Trajan. Interesting. So that can be really fucking effective. Yeah. Um, especially because all the character buffs that like. People get now that they absolutely rely on and depend on. You're just like, nope, goodbye. None of that shit. So, I like cool. seeing the Deceiver. Next one's the Nightbringer. Yep. Then a Hexmark Destroyer. A Plasmancer with a Risen Tyrant. A Technomancer with a Hyper... Hyperspatial. That one, you know. Transfer node. And then a Transcendent Satan. So, three Satans in this one. Three big of those. That's the Auto 6 Advance. Oh, cool. That's a pretty good one, actually. Honestly. Which is kind of cool if you, you put that on... It could have just been a point thing, too. Like, hey, I just have the points extra... Toss in an enhancement. Yeah, you know, and it's not bad on the Tesla Immortals because I believe those are assault. So you just uh, yeah. you, so they're just moving eleven, which is kind of cool. I like it. That is that is. Um, but yep, he's got a ten man Immortal squad with Tesla, ten man Immortal with Gauze Blaster, a very large Scarab Swarm or Scarab Swarm with the six man, a big six man Canoptic Wraiths. A three-man Locust Destroyer, three-man Locust Destroyer, and then a three-man Heavy goss. Destroyers. Yep. yep. That's pretty cool, man. That's a, that's a fun list to see, honestly. Just with the Immortals hopping around everywhere with the tra with the Satans and everything. And just, I, I hope he, like, nuked some characters with the Deceiver. That'd be really fun to see. You know, it's, the Hypercrypt Legion lists are always fun to, to watch because they're all different. Yep. They really are. They, they usually have a couple, like, similar characters. And at least yeah, one I mean, Satan, there's, there's but then the everything attacks, after that, right. it's fucking all over yeah. the board. You take the Arisen Tyrant guy, you take the the Nightbringer, yep. like every list. Probably at least one unit of Immortals, and then you kind of like go from there. You know? Yeah, I agree. All right, with this one, you were, uh, played your first round up was against uh, Bill uh, Huin. Huan? Yeah, sorry, Bill. Um, and you were playing Sisters. Love seeing All Sisters, because I love seeing Sisters get fucking crushed sometimes. Um, running a pretty nice uh, Sisters list here. Love it. Yep, a lot of characters in there. Some big Battle Sisters squads, too. Simple, yeah. And a bunch of Castigators. Some Three Sacrosins. Sacrosins squads. Yes. Love them. Chad. Get the fucking Sacrosins out there to die to Necrons. Good job, man. Um... <laughs> But honestly, like sometimes sisters can be a little bit of a hard matchup for those Necrons because sisters, I think, can can yep. deal with Satans. Given the right units, yeah, yep. yeah. If you see twenty Arcos, the the uh, Hypercrypt lists do not want to see that. Yeah, so yeah, solid yeah, work I mean, there. It's tough. Your next one was going to be against Greg Harris. He can be a pretty good opponent to play into, and he's been piloting his custodes for years. So that's what he's running is his mm -hmm. custodes. They're super good right now. And running a pretty standard 
double Kalidi. Custodes list, yeah, with that grab tanks. You either see those or the, the Terminators. They throw in one of them. Mm-hmm. Ten, ten wardens hanging around. Um, yep. And it's it's that's that's a that's a strong list to play into. So very good work there, knocking that one down. And then the next one was Brad Townsend. Uh, super fun guy to play against. He's one of the Tundra Tactics guys. But Brad, I'm gonna shit on you a little bit. Submit your list. Uh, and it says he was playing Adeptus Soriatus. I don't know if that's the what he was actually playing. Because it's the auto select from choosing armies because it's the first one alphabetically. Yeah, so I have no idea. But hey, beating Brad's still a really good win because that is a very good player. So strong work doing that with your hyperclip ne- or I hyperclip bet he necros. Played T-son? Vehicle Gene Steeler Colts. You think so? Yeah. Hundred percent. That's what he played. I'll put money right on it that it was T Suns. <laughs> We're going to do a side bet. <laughs> I don't know if betting's illegal on YouTube, so we're not going out to what it actually is. All right. And then our last event was St. Patrick's Slobknocker. Uh, they had an interesting little Love photo it. for this one. Salt Hammer West just yep. absolutely laying it down on these guys. Yeah, I think that's where they're from, though. I think this is their little uh, hometown area. Um, and that <laughs> was... picture gets me every time. Yeah, this fucking... It's the... Uh, their picture is the, the leprechaun from... Leprechauns. The, yeah. The, with the blacked out oh, teeth and man. everything. It is uh, <laughs> fucking hilarious. But they're out in Abilene, Texas. Uh, and this event was read by Jared DeMartini. Yeah, Martini. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. All right. And we only have one overall first place. This was a uh, nine-man event. It's Necrons. Yeah. I mean, honestly, some of his matchups look like they could be pretty rough. So let's see what they are. And it looks like he's beating up his own on his own team, which is always fun to see. So Nicholas Henry was our first place winner for this one. He went undefeated with his Necrons. Canoptic, Canoptic Court. Canoptic Court. There we go. I like to see stay. it. I think that's the other one. Like Canoptic Court is kind of like that. Like either you can deal with it or you lose. Right. Right. Um, exactly. So let's read all this we are uh, what's his name here to stay like i said either you can deal with it or you can't that's the name of his list is here to stay uh he's got a nightbringer a void dragon uh xeris the illuminor uh just handing out uh that little buff of of defensive strats and or not strats but like defensive like stats armor for contempt and then uh with no cp spend and the extra ap which mm-hmm. is actually pretty cool uh two technomancers one with the dimensional sanctum the other one with the Fulcrum, a Transcendent Satan, so three Satans in this one, and then some Doomstalkers, just to hand out some shooting. It gets the abilities from Hypercrypt, or not Hypercrypt, sorry, uh, Canoptic Court, Court, which is really helpful. A uh, small Scarab Swarm, a big, huge Canoptic Wraith Squad, followed by another big, huge Canoptic Wraith Squad. Not surprised, they really benefit from Canoptic Court. Uh, coming down to Locust Destroyers, just one, two. Definitely to jump around, do some actions, get some objectives maybe. And then a Tomb Blade unit, same thing, just jumping around doing actions and objectives. Really like seeing this list. It's a very straightforward Canoptic Court list. It's here to stay. It's here to just fucking sit on that board, deal some damage where it needs to, and then make you regret just existing with him there. Uh, His first opponent was Alex Morrison, playing Adeptus Soriatus. Uh... Honestly, I think that they have some of the tools to deal with Canoptic Court. Your sister's pretty They definitely do. Like. I'm interested to see this list, though, because you need certain units. It's got 30 Argos. That's a good start. But running an Exorcist, no Castigators. So those Wraiths actually become kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. Okay. Castigators are better into them? You definitely want Castigators, I think, for the for the Wraith units. Okay. Because the Argos are going to kill a Satan or a Wraith unit, maybe. Yeah. And then die. How do the Par- how does the Paragon Squad with like Morvan Vol do into that? Vol will kill two Satan in a turn if you let. Okay, her. cool. So, um, the tools are there, but uh, I kind of lean into it hmm. a little bit more. But um, yeah, I mean he had the tools. Fuck yeah, yeah. I mean that's a solid win though. Like yep. especially whenever you play against an army that has the tools to be a difficult matchup mm-hmm. as your first game just out the gate. So strong work there. Yeah. Your next one was going to be uh, Nicholas Henry played against Michael uh, Fielding. Michael Fielding over here was playing Death Guard. Death Guard. Uh, with some Putrefires, that Lord of Contagion, Mortarian to hand out the absolutely just delete fucking Satan's abilities. Bunch of Plague Marines, huge play, or just a shit ton of Plague Marines. No super big squads, though, just a bunch of five mans. 
some rhinos to bring those plague marines up the field. Two units of Death Shroud Terminators. Uh, bloat drone, some other stuff. So just some things that could possibly deal with it, but could have a really hard time maybe eating through everything. Yeah, I think uh, I think Hypergrip just outscores that list. I, I think the Death Guard well. maybe potentially tables you, but... Yeah. You're just they, you're, they, they you're, you got tabled, them. but you you scored ninety eight points. Yeah. And his last one was against Christopher Thomas, running Death Guard yeah. again. So just another Death Guard list, <laughs> same <laughs> kind of concept. Um, so strong work there, Nicholas. That, that's a that's a good thing. It's yeah. good to see Salt Hammer coming out here uh, over into Texas, man. That's pretty cool. Salt Hammer he West. He came. He slobbed. He knocked. Yep, at the old St. Patrick's Day slob knocker. That's how it's done. Strong work. Well, cool. Hey, that is the, it for the events for this week on Texas. Strong work again across Texas, guys. We had another, like, I think it was over 70 players actually show up across Texas. We're fucking crushing it. That's without even having a fucking GT or anything like that. Texas is still just slaying it as far as states are concerned for the competitive events in 40K. So strong work to everybody. Strong work to everybody that won this week as well. And we're going to do some of our closeouts, right? So once again... Going to give a shout out to the guys at uh, War, War Dome Houston. They're having a fantastic event here in a couple weeks. Buy your tickets. Please use the promo code HAMMERED. All right. When you do that, it gives us the ability to choose a school for them to donate everything to. And it also gets a lot more players to their event, which is going to be a golden ticket event. So get your tickets. They still have them available. And knock that out. It's going to be a fantastic venue and should be a really, really fun time. I cannot stress enough how every event that I've been to that it is their first year, it's usually the best that they have because they're trying to solidify themselves as that main event to go to. So get your and, tickets there. And you know, like as a competitive player, you see a new event popping up. My first question is, what does the terrain look like? Yeah. And it's it's US Open style. Uh, the terrain sets themselves look really nice. They're they're like wood. They're not MDF. They're like made out of wood. Yeah. They're super nice. Um, and you know, it's us open style, you know, you're going to get a standard layout. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go to that event. I'm super excited. Um, following that, the next one up is going to be, uh, Alamo that's here in San Antonio ran by David. That is once again, a fantastic mm -hmm. event. He still has some tickets available, but those are going to be selling out very quick. Oh yeah. That is a very popular event. He runs it extremely well and it's going to be downtown at the Hyatt here. Yeah. Um, so you bring fun. your family. It's a good time. It's a fantastic venue. Uh, the drinks are super tasty there. It's a it's a wonderful spot to play. And then you're right here on the river walk, and you can have a good time the rest of your night, man. It's it's a fantastic event. Yeah, you can go get so, lunch on the river walk. Oh it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I honestly I didn't even I didn't, I forgot about lunch. There was <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie, lie, and this had nothing. Forgot to, why <laughs> this had nothing to do with the event. But we went somewhere and a oh, dude God. shit on the floor. Oh, God. So you get some of those memorable experiences at the Alamo where sometimes the <laughs> dude just shits on the floor. You know what? But he wasn't a part of the event. It just happened to be a random weird ass thing. And you Death Guard players need to fucking tone it down. Yeah. A so just, hey, just a ten. Go to David's event, man. It's it's a phenomenal event as well, and we can just solidify all these wins because if we go to them as Texans and we win them, it's a lot cooler than letting somebody come from I don't know, say California. And win uh, the Alamo. Oh, we can't have that. <laughs> can't have that. Happened one year. No, Not no, have no, happened no, last no, year. Never <laughs> no, never happened. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for events. We've got some coming up next week, some RTTs as well. We'll be reviewing those on our next episode. And the last little shout out that I'm going to do is once again to Rexer's Lasers. He designs uh, and prints or creates most of the terrain for all of the major events here in Texas, and a lot of the RTTs and everything like that. So if you ever want to get the terrain to practice on, go check out his website at rexerslasers.com. There's going to be a link here right now as I'm talking about it. He also has a bunch of gaming aids. Cannot stress enough how important it is to have those gaming aids to make your game go faster so you never clock out and you never have any issues whatsoever. Besides that, guys, hey, thank you so much for listening to this, and thank you, Nick. You got anything to say? No. I mean, I think we pretty much covered it all. I just want to Shout out also Rexers Lasers. Yeah. The nicest people in the world. And I will yeah. fight you about that if you Yeah, Joey is Joey is a fantastic person. Yeah, yeah they're they're amazing. So. so and they've always, you know, they're always there, like if you forgot your dice, you forgot your tape measure, whatever. Yep. Check out Rexers. They're you know you know what we should do? We should do a uh like a nice this competition between Joey Rexer 
and Joe from <laughs> War Games oh, Live. Shit, dude. Because that is also like another man that we are gifted with. Like those no, are that's, both that's the one. Those are two man. legends of the gaming community. Yeah. They're both from Texas. Maybe I don't know. We should see like a, I mean, a nicest competition. Obviously, like know, it, like a common we, denominator. Maybe here. maybe maybe I'll talk to one of the next events and get like a, a jar set up. Like whichever <laughs> like person, a tip jar. yeah yeah, like a tip jar. <laughs> but then it goes to a charity or something like that. Oh, like, that'd be sick. Who's, I would, I would, I would call some people. Up. Hey, okay. look at that, creating yeah. ideas. Hey, thanks guys for watching this week, and I hope you turn in next tune in next week as well. If you liked us, uh, tell your friends about it and try to let them know to contact me. Um, there is, I, I have a, a bunch of different ways to contact me. Um, try to find somebody, hit me up on Facebook, look for Lone Star Hammered, and there is a email as well that is attached to this page. So like, comment, subscribe, do yep. all that YouTube shit. Yeah. Thanks guys. All right. Have a good time. Bye.